Hello and welcome back to this SPSS one-on-one -on -one series by OOD Analytics. In the last episode, we saw the SPSS interface. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to set up your variables in SPSS and then enter your data. So let's get started. So when you open SPSS, you will see this uh, welcome dialog box, which we are not interested in for now. Just close it. For this session, we are going to use some sample Word document which I've prepared having um, a sample of some five questions that we are going to enter into SPSS to demonstrate how you can set up your variables and enter some data. The, the sample questions are here by displayed on the right hand side of your screen. So we have a questionnaire with five variables name, age in years, we are capturing also height in meters, we are looking at gender. Uh, one for male, two for female, and we also have socioeconomic status of the participant. What I want you to note here is um, some of these variables, which we call categorical variables, they do have numbers defining responses. Like for gender, instead of just male and female, we have a one against male and also two against female. So those are what we call the codes. So we are coding one for male and assigning a code of two to female. Similarly, we are, a code, we are uh, assigning a code of one for low a socioeconomic status and two for medium, then three for high socioeconomic status. So let's go into SPSS and then see how to design this. First, we click on the variable view. When you click on variable view, we have here uh, under columns, we have the first column for name. Um, this is where we type the name of the variable in our questionnaire. Our first variable was name. So just double click inside the first cell and type in name. Click anywhere outside that cell and then you see that other cell, other um, columns are automatically filled for that first row. So here are a few things to observe while, while writing variable names. Number one, spaces are not allowed. If I put in a space name, maybe of, and I click enter, it is going to tell me the variable name contains an illegal character. So spaces are not allowed, but you can use um, underscores. Second thing to observe when writing variable names is that a name should be unique, like there should be only one name written in that way in this data set. If I add another variable called name, when I already have name in here and I click enter, they will tell me that the variable name duplicates an existing variable name. So a name has to be very unique. We have successfully entered our first variable and we've defined this is going to be a string with it we can leave it for decimal points this is going to be a name so decimal points only apply to numbers so the label since a name does not allow spaces this is where you can now write the whole description of what a variable means in this case maybe name we are meaning name of participant so if I click enter, this one label allows. It is giving the full description of the name of that variable. Now, under values, being in a character we are going to type, doesn't apply, we can leave it missing, doesn't apply. So next we are entering age of participant in years. So I can just come still, just double click within that cell with of second row, row number two, and I put in um, age. If I click outside, it automatically autofills the other parts except the label. So age is going to be here. Yeah, it is a numerical variable. It is a number. When it comes to the label, this is where we can put age in years. Has no values um, defined and uh, in case every question is a must enter, if for some record you're driving records from a patient's register and then you find that that person does not have age, 
Since the system will not allow you to proceed without entering something, this is where you specify that, okay, I'm going to enter a certain discrete value, say 99, or it can be any number. You want to choose a number that is not within the range of the normal values of age. Because if I put here a number like 3, and then my age, some of the participants are 3, I'm going to confuse SPSS to think that those people are missing. For this, I don't want to include any missing, so I can just leave it, no missing. I say OK. The measure here, they are telling us it is unknown. So by default, when we selected string, this side became a nominal variable. However, when we when we selected a numeric, the measure is unknown. So click on unknown and you will see these three measurement types. It can be a scale, which is a numerical variable. For this case, age is numerical, so we are going to choose scale variable. And then successfully, we've entered our second variable. Our third variable was um, gender, where we have one for male two for female so still come back here just double click within the third line and put in gender now gender in this case although it is male and female which are, are words but we are not going to enter those words as male and female we are going to enter the codes one and two so if I click outside, by default it is numeric and I'm going to leave that as numeric because I'm going to enter gender as one and twos instead of male and female. So numeric is okay. Decimal points, I, can, I don't need any decimal points since it is just a one or a two. I can reduce that to zero by either typing here zero or I can use these arrows to increase or reduce. So I will reduce to zero. Then gender, I can just, the description can still be gender, the same as the name. Um, now under values, this is where I define the codes that I've assigned to the different responses of the variable gender. So in this case, we saw that um, we, we said gender, one is for male, two is for female. So under values, here we are going to define, if I, if I click on the word none, these three dots appear, so I click on them. So the value is the one that I'm assigning to the label of male. I add, then two, I'm assigning it to female. Then I add. Once I'm done, I say, okay. If for some reason I've made any mistake, uh, maybe this two is supposed to be a three, I click on it, it goes back, the value goes back to its position and the label goes, then I can change. Maybe this was meant to be three and instead of adding, I just change. So now it is three. So I'm going to take this back to, to a two. Once it is clicked like that, I change the number, the other value to two. I click on change. Then I say, okay. So I've defined the values for gender, one for male, two for female. I want to, nothing is missing, and this is a nominal variable. Nominal in that uh, there is no order in, like none is better than the other. There is no natural order as we shall see for the ordinal variables. So we missed out height. So let's enter height. We are going to enter here height, height, of participant it is a numeric variable numeric and height since someone can be 1.2 meters 1.3 so this one we shall need to have number of decimal points so this one depends on uh, the measurement device you're using or the standard way of measuring that variable so this one we are going to give it two decimal points and then uh, under label we are saying this is height in meters being a numeric variable, we are not defining any values and we don't have any missing. Uh, if we said maybe let's consider um, someone who has mm, 99 
uh, as missing and I say okay so that one is a value to show that this is missing and this is also a scale measured on and uh, it is a numeric variable lastly we have um, socio-economic status which same thing we shall just come back to the last variable number five but here is the other trick under variable names you can just use any short form I can just call this socio-economic maybe status and then here you come and define SES is meaning socio-economic status yeah then like we did for gender you define here the values one is meaning low um, three for high add this and then we say okay so most importantly here is the measure you can see that when we are look to looking at uh, social economic status there is that natural form of order between like you move from low to medium to high so that makes this an ordinal variable so here under measure we call it ordinal variable yeah successfully we've entered we have finished setting up all our variables in SPSS so under the variable view once you're done, you now turn to the data view. Under data view, you can see all of your variables will be displayed from the le from left to right. And in this format, it means when I have participant number one, I'll just put in, I just double click within the cell and I start entering. Uh, I can say this is Ben, uh, age maybe 50, and uh, gender, um, male but now in this case i'm going to use a one and then height maybe two meters even if i write a two since we defined two decimal points by default the other two will be displayed if we went and changed to one decimal point for height here if i changed to one and i came back to data view you will see that I have one decimal point here. Under socioeconomic status, maybe I belong to group to low socioeconomic status. So yeah, that participant one is done. Maybe you have another uh, participant called Sarah. Try it out with any entries that you want. So you have successfully entered your data. It is time to save your data set simply go to file um, <clears throat> click on save and then you will see you locate where you want your data to be to be stored <clears throat> I want mine to be on desktop here so I'll just put sample data set then I make sure yeah I know I have saved then click save now you will see the name has it has now sample data set as the name here. That's what we have for today. Next we shall be looking at how do you import data that has been already entered uh, in some other format, maybe in Excel or Stata. How do you import it in SPSS and how do you also export from SPSS to other different file formats. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so that you do not miss out on any episodes that we release. See you in the next video.